Jonathan Kane is here today. He's a musician, sing <coughs> musician, he also happens to be married to Paula, in case you didn't know, but he's a musician, sing singer, songwriter with the band Journey, and also, and also the Babies and Bad English, two different bands. Won 19 top 40 singles, 25 gold and platinum, platinum albums. Jonathan released his first solo Christian rock album entitled What God Wants to Hear in October of 2016. Kane and his bandmates from Journey are being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame later this year. He has won multiple awards for best-selling best songs like Open Arms and Who's Crying Now. He was nominated for a Grammy Award for the song When You Love a Woman, which he co-wrote with Steve Perry and Neil Sean. Don't Stop Believing is the number one downloaded song of all time. We're going to show a short video and then welcome Jonathan Kane to Liberty University. The band knew it had to do something. With the advent of Jonathan Kane, that helped that move, you know, come to its, uh, to its own. I consider John one of the foremost songwriters ever, ever. Jonathan Cain is a musician and singer-songwriter, best known for his work with Journey. He's a recent Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee. He has received two prestigious BMI Most Performed Song of the Year Songwriter Awards for Open Arms and Who's Crying Now. As a songwriter, he's had songs recorded by Hart, Mariah Carey, and Michael Bolton. Last year, he released his first Christian solo album, What God Wants to Hear. Liberty University, please welcome Jonathan Kane. Put your hands together, come on. <laughs> Such an honor to have you here. I, I hope you didn't miss this. Don't Stop Believing is the number one downloaded song in music history. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, thanks to things like Glee and The Sopranos, right. um, you know, they almost won a Grammy for that, and I pray that they wouldn't. Because <laughs> we don't have a Grammy, folks. We don't have a Grammy. Isn't that amazing? Not yet. No? Nope. Not yet. Nope. It's, it's still early. Man, I, we're, <laughs> can, we, um, can we go to the beginning? I mean, before you became a guy who wrote iconic songs that, you know, a lot of us know and grew up with, uh, tell us about your upbringing. Tell us about your childhood. How did you get into the band? Well, I should tell you how I, I, I found my faith through my father. I had a very uh, spiritual father who was almost prophetic. Um, he saw something in me and proclaimed that, and I received it. And without my dad, none of this would have been possible. My father's passed on now, but he's my vision keeper, and he's the one that taught me how to pray at seven years old. And I received Jesus Christ... Uh, before my first communion, because of him, and uh, brought me to the Lord. And uh, then uh, the school next to the church burned down in 1958, and we lost uh, 96 children and, and three nuns perished in the fire. And uh, my father saw that I was upset. We were all upset. We had no counseling or anything. You can imagine losing friends next to the house of prayer. It just doesn't make sense when you're eight years old, right? Amen. Um, so my father said, we're going to shift into music. We're going to go take you on, on a journey. And, and I, I see it, a, a great music, you know, thing for you. So he did. He, he put me into music lessons, and I started on accordion. Anybody play accordion out there? No? Okay. So how did an accordion player get in journey, right? Um, so one, one thing led to the, to the next, and uh, I found myself in music college. Um, studied uh, or, uh, composing and uh, composition and mining minor in uh, piano and voice. So you know went and did that, and that was during the Vietnam War when we were all drafted, and you know, and the Lord gave me a real good draft number. <laughs> so my father continued to believe uh, that something great musically would, would happen for me. So I really owe it to him, and then. Every time I would get into a band like such the babies in 75 or 6, he'd say, it's just a stepping stone. It's just a stepping stone. There's greatness coming. And I received it. And sure enough, um, 
In 1981, I played for him in front of 10,000 people, just like he said. And uh, he's the one that gave me the idea for the song, Don't Stop Believing." How about that? My dad. So your father has had such an influence on your life, and, uh, and I, you see that. Like, to, to watch any interview with you, to, to get around your life, you always bring him up. Uh, and then, obviously, your, your heavenly father. Uh, I, since we've gotten to know each other in the last year, I, I follow you on Twitter. And so many times, you're just talking about how blessed you are. You're constantly finding, everywhere you go, the word blessed just shows up. You're like, I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to serve here. You're, uh, recently, you, you were doing some humanitarian work, and, and even though you were the one blessing others, you came away just boasting on how much, how much of a blessing it was for you. Tell us about the humanitarian work you do and, and how you see things through that lens of blessing. I believe that blessings are meant to be paid forward. In other words, when God gives you something as mighty as like a chance and an opportunity to be in a band journey. <laughs> I was selling stereos, you know, two years before that, making no money at all. I was, and then, you know, all of a sudden, I'm supernaturally taken to the stage, a rock stage where I'm playing for all these people. Um, that's a blessing, and, it, and it's a large, giant leap. And I knew it had to come from the Lord. And I knew that the longevity of journey is no accident that the Lord has had his hand upon this band. And I hope, you know, I had something to do with it. Because when I joined, it took off. We went from selling 2 million records to 10 million records. And, you know, so when you get blessings like that, you want to give back. And we, we do things for Make-A-Wish, uh, T.J. Martell. We, we very much have heart for the children. Uh, we raised $145,000 for Make-A-Wish this year. This year. This year, our Journey Nation. So we got, we got gold-plated fans. Our fans have got a heart for God. I find that uh, there's some great people. And you have such a generous spirit, and, and even taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us today. What is, out of all the, the epic things you've gotten to do in your life, playing stadiums and uh, just all the different things. What is one memory you have that really stands out uh, above everything else? Yeah, it would be uh, Kenny Skylick uh, was struggling with cystic fibrosis. In 1983, an organization called Make-A-Wish was just getting started, and we were the first celebrity wish to go and, and greet him. It was his wish to meet Journey. Um, we didn't know how sick he was. When we got there, we understood that he was very, very ill. And um, so we had this song called Only the Young Can Say. And we had a Walkman, and we, he listened to it, uh, smiled, and was just so happy we were there with his family. And sadly, he went into a coma and died the next day. And uh, so I realized that saying farewell to such a brave man uh, had to be God's work. And, and that song was his song. And uh, that stays with me, you know, and I, I continue to champion for Make-A-Wish, um, and the whole band does. So it, it was just an amazing experience to be with someone in the last moments of their life. Wow. Uh, you guys have gone through a lot of criticism as a band. Uh, you talk about this in one of the interviews that you did earlier, uh, where you, you say you've always stayed the path, and it's, it's, it's amazing that you guys haven't been awarded a Grammy, even though you're about to walk into the Hall of Fame. How about that? The Hall uh, of Fame, he. Yeah, this year. Uh, Everybody kept saying, I thought you were already in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> no, we weren't. So, so tell us, like, how... How, what kind of advice would you give someone about ignoring, uh, you know, the criticism and staying the path? Because obviously you've found enormous success as a band, but you haven't listened to a bunch of naysayers. Uh, what advice would you give all of us when people, are, people don't understand what God's maybe called us to do on our path? I think, you know, it's just stay on your course. I mean, God put you on a course. I know that the Lord sent me on the path to write songs. Um, to make people smile, to make people feel good. Uh, I did it for the, not for the adoration or the, you know, the acceptance. I write songs, and if you don't like it, that's too bad. That's my song. And I encourage all of you out there 
to boldly enter in, to not pay attention to all the noise. You know, you've got to turn down the noise and stay on your course. It's almost, I mean, you have to keep your eyes open, certainly. And I knew those critics back in the 80s would all be silenced. I knew that our music would stand the test of time. We've been at it over 40 years, and we're still relevant. We're playing 60 cities next year. We filled AT&T Park, 55,000 people, you know, last, in September. So all those critics, I mean, you have to remember, you begin with the end in mind. And uh, I knew that um, even though they were, you know, bashing us and that we would endure and we would overcome because of our Lord. Amen. It is. It's all because of him. Amen. You know. Amen. I tell you. Uh, what's interesting about going to a Journey concert is that it is all kinds of people. I mean, you've got gr grandpas all the way down to, you know, 11-year-olds in the room, and they know yeah, lot, every word to every song. A lot of students song. come now, and thank you for coming. Appreciate you. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, one of the things I love that, that you, you say is that you believe that every song has a destiny. Yes. Can you speak into that a little bit? What do you mean by that? Well, I can just, what I just said about the song Only the Young, um, it was destined to be at Kenny's bedside. Um, it was taken off the album for some reason, they outvoted it, and I never understood why it wasn't on an album until then. So, you know, God has timing, you know, for songs. Um, the song Faithfully, uh, you know, just God gave me that song, thank you. I was on the road, and it was God's timing to say, John, you're living in the grateful, what do you think? And I said, God, this is what I think. I'm so grateful. Uh, and you could say, oh, God, I stand by you. I'm forever yours faithfully. You know, you stand by me. Forever yours faithfully. Man. So a, a guy that wrote Open Arms faithfully, uh, and recently you, you married the great Paula White. Yes. And so tell us about just how you guys met and uh, oh my gosh. what's it like being this guy who writes songs that everybody has in their weddings and then all of a sudden you end up uh, marrying this amazing woman of God. We'd love to hear about how y'all met and your marriage a little bit and what God's been teaching you through that. We were on Southwest Airlines together, and, uh, <laughs> which we never fly. Neither one of us are crazy about Southwest, but we happened to be on a Southwest plane. I was sitting down with my bandmates. I had filled half the plane with the crew and everything. And she walks on and drops a book. She sits down and drops this big book in the aisle. I pick it up. And the title of the book is Calling in the One. And I'm like, okay, she's a psychiatrist. Or she's a uh, writer of some sort. You know, I didn't know it, but I had to ask her. And then she said, no, I'm a pastor. I'm like, you're a pastor? <laughs> oh, wow. You know, I'm, I'm not in that world. I'm not in that circle. So we spent uh, two and a half hours comparing notes, and we had so much in common. I couldn't believe it. Um, and uh, she, you know, saw, I asked her, since you're a pastor, can you tell me, is it possible for me to get to love Jesus like I loved Jesus when I was a child? Can I get that glow back? Is it possible? And she said, you know, the Lord, you're a deep soul. He, he wants you. You just don't know it. You, you haven't listened, but I'll help you, you know. And um, it was cool. And we were friends for a long time. And then, you know, I went through a kind of a bad marriage and divorce. And uh, my son went into rehab. And uh, Paula's son, of course, um, uh, had, had some issues with rehab. And so we compared notes on that. And then... Um, I just, you know, finally when I got loose, I called her and I said, uh, are you seeing anybody? <laughs> and we haven't separated ever since, you know. So that's, it was just love at first sight. I mean, it happens, folks. And she, through her, uh, her ministry, through all of her wonderful anointed friends, uh, I want to thank Archbishop Duncan Williams who's my spiritual father in Ghana. Uh, he baptized me, and he married Paula and I on Prayer Mountain. And uh, I met him in London, and I knew he was looking in, into my soul, being a prophet. And uh, he gave me the assurance 
that I had what it takes to be the husband of a pastor. Because that's a big thing, you know. Uh, you have to stand in the gap uh, with, you know, with, with the Lord against the enemy. Yeah. Amen. Man, it's obvious you're growing. Uh, you just recently came out with a, a Christian album, and you listen to those lyrics that have come out of your own life experiences, and it's just such a worshipful experience. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about writing this Christian album? And uh, Yeah, we, um, I was so blessed. Uh, last year, uh, the Lord kept downloading lyrics upon lyric upon lyric, uh, and I always write songs with the music first, and, and these were all things that he wanted me to, to speak about. And so I went into Scripture, and I made sure they were, uh, you know, because we didn't have the Bible when we were Catholics, you know. We, I'm just learning. I'm sort of a newbie at the Bible, kid. So um, anyway, I, I wanted to make sure my foundation was strong and solid with the Lord. And so some people say, well, the, the music's innocent. Well, I want it to be innocent. And some of the music that's out there today, I'm not sure if they're singing about their lover or the Lord. I don't know. But there's no mention of Christ or God or anything. And, and call me old school, okay? <laughs> and, uh, but it was an amazing experience. We made the album in probably a week. It took a week to do, and it was one of the most amazing projects I've been involved with in a long time. It's a great album. We're, we're going to get to hear a few songs. I know we're also going to get to hear a few Journey songs from you this morning. <laughs> but, um, man... They're like Thank my kids. Um, I always tell people that songs are like kids. Some turn out to be really successful and some not so successful. <laughs> you love all of them. But you but love them all. Some and do better than others. Some do better than others. And uh, I've got a pretty amazing family right here uh, that I've been blessed with. And, uh, you know, I, I, I owe so much to my father. Yeah. Amen. Man, are you excited about getting to hear some Journey songs and some songs off of Nothing's album? Um, if we can, we, we'd love to pray for you, brother. Man, yes. we're, we're, we are so grateful for you. That would and, be an honor. And and, I, I'd like to thank, and, first of all, uh, Jerry again, Jerry Falwell Jr. Yeah. For having me. Thank you. And then, of course, Becky. Becky. Let's Becky. hear it for Becky. That's a new one. Hey, uh, Paula, would you come up as well? We, we, we want to pray for both of you. We really do feel like in this particular moment that God has just given you an, an amazing amount of influence. And, and Paula, would you just take, before we pray, uh, don't you agree, we've never had in the history of our lifetime the inroad into governance like we do right now. We have a president who's so open to spiritual guidance, so open to counsel from, from the, the men and women of God right now. And so true, Pastor David. I tell people all the time when they're doing interviews, they say, well, how did you get to know him? He was watching Christian television, and he reached out to me, and he um, verbatim repeated three sermons to me. And then God very specifically told me, and when I say that, not in an audible voice, but inspired in my spirit, show him who I am. Now, that's not to minimize that he already had a foundation with the Lord, that he was confirmed Presbyterian. His family went to church every single week. But I knew that that, that was my assignment, just to live as a Christian before him to pray. So one thing led to another, and 15 years later, little did I know it would be in the office of a president. But one thing I can say is President Trump is very hungry for God and loves prayer. Many people don't know, back in 2011, he was considering running for president. And he called me up and he said, would you, Paula, would you bring about, you know, bring a handful of men and women of God around? And he said, we want, I want to pray and, and see what, what do you think? And so we prayed for him probably for six hours that day, just spoke into his life, prayed for him. And the next day I said, what do you think? He said, I don't believe it's God's timing. So this is a man who very much wants to stand in the gap and um, see the values that our nation was found it on and what we believe as Christians and stand for in this nation. So he'll fight for us. I believe that it is the best that I've ever seen in any administration with a partnership with government. And as the kingdom of God, we have to exegesis, not just the word of God, but our communities, government, every area. God has put us into the world to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the earth. So we, we not only pray for President Trump, but you know, all of you graduates that are graduating, send your resumes. Let's get them. Let's get every Liberty student in the administration. Let's just infiltrate the world and make a difference and impact this world for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'll take them directly to the head. Amen. 
Man, you, you really have, uh, you, God's given you influence, and we're going to pray for you to have wisdom and discernment, and that, that you would know when to speak in, and that, uh, that honestly, that in the next few years, that we will continue to see uh, our president grow in his faith, and, and, and that God will just give you the ability to, to, to uh, lead the pack in, in, in those senses. Let, let's pray for this uh, just couple, everybody. Father, thank you, Father, for uh, just the work of the gospel in the life uh, of a girl from Mississippi, and Lord, how you have just raised her up in this moment to be a voice for you. I pray that, God, she would stay grounded and humble, and that, Lord, you would just continue to raise her stock, God, that she would be a, a bridge builder, a, a unifier like never before. And uh, I pray that you would, Father, continue to strengthen this marriage. Lord, I know how exhausting it is to, to be pulled at every direction. I can't imagine for them just to be in, in the band and at the same time to be the pastor of a church and then also now this, this role in, in, in getting to speak into the life of our president. As a council leader, I, I pray that, God, you would give them stamina, that when they do get some time off, that it would just fill their tank. Lord, protect them, guide them, be, be in the very center of their life. Thank you again, Lord, that they get to be here. I pray that they would know that they're friends at, at, at liberty, that they would feel at home when they think about us and they come here. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, can we thank them again? Come on, put your hands together for them. And, um, are you ready for some Journey songs, everybody? Greatest sing-along ever. Let's do this. Well, guys, you know, every song starts with an inspiration, some kind of story, right? And, uh, you know, before it gets to the band, it's got to be an intimate encounter with the piano and you. That's it, right? And I had a, a wonderful singer, Steve Perry, that God blessed me with. When I started uh, in L.A. and tried to do uh, my thing, they, after I was rejected, they said, what are you going to do now, John? I said, I'm going to find somebody to sing my songs. <laughs> somebody great. But they all have beginnings, and this song uh, is out of gratefulness. And we all, uh, we're on the road paying that price, missing our families. And I used to watch the crew take down the stage every night. And I thought, wow, what if we had a song we could send home like a postcard? Something like this. I brought this song to Steve Perry. He said, what do you got for a ballad? I said, well, I wrote this one. Let's try it. Open you see 
this one. few of my kids. What do you think, guys? Thank you. So my daddy, uh, boy, do I miss him. Uh, I was running out of money in L.A. I was in Hollywood, and I asked him if I should come home to Chicago and give up this whole music thing. And he said, son, I have a vision that greatness is coming your way. You just got to get to the blessings beyond the battle. And I believe you're battling right now. So stick to your guns and don't stop believing. You want to help me out? Clap your hands, come on. Just a small towner living Just a singer boy, born and raised they Detroit. Ooh, it took the midnight train going anywhere. Sailor in a smoky room, the smell of wine, cheap perfume. For the smile they could share the night It goes on and on and on and on Waiting Up and down the boulevard Sound good I believe you know this song
you so much. Woo. Yes, that song has blessed us so mightily. I tell you what, who knew, right? You ready to rock for Jesus? This next song is off my album, What God Wants to Hear. And uh, uh, it's about the omniscient, omnipresent, overwhelming presence of the Holy Spirit. It's just unfathomable, as the Bible says. So let's just call upon the presence right now. It's deeper than deep. beginning or end. 
Your perfection holds us to a nature divine. Omniscient, omnipresent, chosen by grace. There is still a remnant, majestic power, author of all scripture in this world. Thunder and wind are just a whisper. Deeper than deep. I hope that's the way you feel about the Lord. Uh, we're going to do one more song for you. This is a new one. Uh, you can get my album on Amazon or iTunes, what God wants to hear. Uh, you can't get this one. I'm going to play it for you because it's special night, special day, I should say. Uh, I pray that all of us this year can stop worrying about all this stuff and just trying to be more like Jesus. Clap your hands, man. Come on. Some souls along the way His living word is true 